Buying a house is not a matter of just going to Zillow, seeing what house you liked, and just paying for it. No, especially the way the market is today. In your opinion, what do you think is the most difficult thing about buying a house? And while you leave your comments, I wanted to tell you that buying a house is in fact a process that requires two years of planning and preparation. In fact, this process looks like this and this is not something the banks will tell you. So let's suppose this is your timeline, right? So we got zero, one, two, because I mentioned that it's a process that takes uh, two years or more. And what goes into this process is constant planning, constant monitoring, and then eventually get to the execution of things, right? And this process, it's kind of like a cycle, so to speak. So from point zero to year one, you have to do all of this, planning, monitoring, executing. And if things go well, you repeat that process again on year two. And if things go well in year two, you will finally be able to buy your house. But when things don't go according to plan, your process will look something like this, right? So let's say you get started at point zero all the way to year one with your planning, with your monitoring and your execution, but then something went wrong and it didn't go according to plan. Now what will wind up happen is that you're adding an extra year to your timeline. This is why I say that buying a house could take you more than two years right? Because what you don't do and two years prior will end up affecting you ahead down the road, right? And this process will get repeated over and over again. If in year two things don't go well, then you add it another year on to year four until maybe finally, once you get things done right, uh, you have learned from your mistakes and you know everything aligns with you, you will finally be able to buy the house that you so much wanted. This problem happened to me the first time I wanted to buy a house. And I know that you're probably going through a similar situation and that's why you're here, to find solutions and hopefully to prevent the mistakes that I made. The way banks work is that they seek to put together a puzzle of you. So let's say this is you, right? You are the puzzle. And as every puzzle, it will have different pieces that make up this puzzle. So on one end, you will have your income. On this side, you will have your DTI, which we will talk about in a bit. Um, let's say on this side, you have your uh, length of employment. And then over here, we have your credit. And then on this end, we're going to talk about your down payment. Of these pieces, the first one to consider is your income. Why? Because income is the piece that takes the longest to plan and execute, since this depends on two factors, your professional skills and the type of job you can get with those skills. The more developed and unique your professional skills are, the higher your income. And for those who are already scared by the subject of skills, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Not having these kind of skills just means that you will have to work harder and get an extra job. You see, income has a lot of weight because it affects how much you can get approved for in your mortgage. Banks tend to approve between three to four times your annual income. This means that if you generate, for example, $60,000 a year, the bank will lend you somewhere between $180,000 to $240,000 to buy a house. But if the houses you like are in the $500,000 range, for example, this means that either you pay the difference out of your pocket or you generate more income to report on your taxes, um, be it through a new job, an extra one, or through your investments. The way the bank verifies your income is by reviewing your tax returns for the last two years. And that is how they uh, get that baseline to work with. So let's make a reference back to your timeline, right? So you got year zero, you got one and two. 
And for the first two years, you reported an income of 60,000, right? This is why I keep saying that um, planning requires two years or more to buy a house because in a way it all revolves back down to your tax return. So you have 60,000 here, 60,000 here. So you're gonna add these two together, right? So 60K and 60K, because the bank does take the average between the two. And so you do the math, and that means that the baseline they're gonna use is 60,000, just like I mentioned earlier, and then they're gonna lend you somewhere between three to four times, right? But let's say there's a house that you like that is out of this range that you can buy, and you're able to generate more income to put you over that benchmark where you get the bank to approve you more money and not having to put extra money um, out of your pocket through the down payment. Let's say you were able to find a job in year three for $80,000, right? So when you have $80,000 here, now we're gonna take a new average based on this number. So if we have 60K plus 80K, and then we divide that by two, that will put you at $75,000 a year. And if the bank is willing to lend you three to four times that amount. Now we're talking about a new range of $225,000 to $300,000. That is why planning is very important. And in some cases, getting ready to buy a house can even take more than two years, just as we saw in the prior example. Now, the next point has to do with your DTI, which stands for debt to income ratio. That is the ratio of your income in proportion to your debt. The bank prefers your DTI to be below 30%. The lower, the better. Let's suppose you have the following annual expenses. So there is your rent, right? Which will, let's say, assign $12,000. Then it's uh, your credit card, so let's say, those are about $5,000 a year. Then you have your cable of your internet, and that's $1,000 a year. Then there's also your cell phone bill, $1,000 a year. And your electricity over here, that's uh, $1,500 a year because, you know, summer months, the AC and stuff like that. And then there's also, you know, your student loans. Why not? And that is about $3,000 a year, right? And all of that is summing up to $23,500. And the bank views all of this as debt, okay? Because those are responsibilities that you have to pay and therefore is taking money away from your budget, which could be used to pay the mortgage, right? And so the way the bank does the calculation is that it takes your debt, right? What they view as your debt, and then they will divide that by your income. So since we've been using $60,000, let's just divide that number by 60,000, and you will wind up with a DTI of 39.2. This is way too high for the bank's liking. Again, the bank will prefer your DTI to be below 30%. And there are several ways for you to lower that DTI. Reducing your debt, uh, for example, changing your cell phone bill for a cheaper one, uh, consumer less electricity, for example, lowering or eliminating debt, for example, your student loans, and generating more money because by generating more income, your DTI will actually go down. In fact, let's run the numbers right now. So we have 23,500 and uh, in this last example, we talked about 80,000. So we're gonna divide this amount of debt by your new income of $80,000 and that will give you a DTI of 29.4, which is well within the range that the banks will prefer. This whole low DTI process can take anywhere from one to two years. I mean, you could cut expenses immediately, but paying off debt will take a little bit more effort because you will need to generate more money to pay it down. Now, I wanna pause for a second and ask for your opinion. What do you think about what I'm sharing so far? Let me know down in the comment section below and your comment will help me get to know you better so that way I can design a much better episode that can meet your needs in terms of what you're looking to learn. Now, back to the episode. Now, the next piece of the puzzle is your credit, which doesn't need an introduction. But if you are new to our channel, feel free to watch this video to expand your knowledge on the subject. 
after you're done with this video, of course. Now, going back to what we were talking about, the bank prefers that you have a FICO score of 720 or above in order to qualify for a mortgage with good rates. Of course, there is the option of looking for mortgage programs like these where you can participate with a lower score. But if you're not planning to take out a mortgage with these programs, the best thing you could do is to build your FICO score to hit 720 or above in all three bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And make sure the score is above 720 in all three bureaus, okay? Because the bank will always go to the middle score. Otherwise, this will happen. So let's suppose you have your uh, scores here. So let's say 720, maybe there is a 680 over here and there's a 750 on this end. And let's just randomly assign the burial. So this is Experian. Let's say this one belongs to TransUnion. And uh, this last one is for Equifax. So like I mentioned, the way the bank works is that whenever they're looking at all the scores from all three burials, they're gonna end up choosing the one in the middle, which is this score right here, right? This one here is the lowest, this one here is the highest, so they're gonna go for that 710. And because your middle score happens to be under 720, that means that the rates that you're gonna get are not gonna be the cheapest. You're gonna get a rate, but it's gonna be slightly higher than you would have normally liked because you missed that 720 benchmark. The next piece is how long you have been in your job. Ideally, a minimum of two years. The longer you've been at your job, the better, because the bank will perceive you as a stable person. You don't want to be perceived as someone who jumps from one job to another in less than a year. So for those who are considering a career change, think about it because this can affect you. Now, Let's move on to the down payment. Like I mentioned, your income plays a very important role in determining how much the bank lends you. And if the house of your dreams is costing more than the amount the bank is willing to lend you, you will have to put the difference out of your pocket through the down payment. And that money has to be deposited in your bank account at least six months in advance, because if not, the bank will assume that you borrow that money for the down payment from someone else, which could be viewed as debt, and that will affect your DTI, possibly pushing it over 30%. Now, for those who are ready for the next step, check out this video. 